Hi, welcome to the second part of my video tutorial. Uh, this one we're going to call it how to expose your images properly. A lot of times people have difficulty figuring out how much integration or exposure is required to get a decent uh, image to view. So I want to explain how I do it. Uh, basically, I start off, now I don't have my camera connected to my little slick, um, so I just fed an image from that I captured from my uh, Melicam camera using Webcam Max into my little slick, so we can have it here displayed on a preview for demonstration purposes. So I won't be able to use the hardware video digitizer settings because I'm not using my MCV1E. Now, people were asking what's the difference between the hardware and software. Well, the hardware is your actual real adjustments for your digitizer or your uh, frame grabber. Software, so, uh, some frame grabbers cannot adjust the brightness contrast, so they can use a simulated software adjustment uh, of the brightness contrast. Or in this case, I'm using Webcam Max, so later I'm going to show. Uh, what an under and over exposure image looks like on the histogram by raising or lowering the contrast and brightness. So I won't be doing that right now. So we'll go back to the histogram and we are looking at still M16 and basically when I start off uh, observing I will uh, figure out what I'm using for the night, uh, what AGC because Certain things affect the exposure integration time. For example, a faster focal ratio will make the image show up sooner with less exposure time than a slow focal ratio. A higher AGC will also do the same. It will show more noise, but it will reduce your exposure time. Also, light pollution. If you got a lot of sky glow, light pollution, and you're not using a light pollution filter you will definitely overexpose the image quite quickly if you're in a dark sky and uh, you're not using filters you can go longer because you don't have as much sky glow to wash out the uh, image the background where it gets so bright that you can't see the foreground the object that we're looking at now when you look at the peak of the histogram uh, between here, like uh, we'll recap what we said before, this area between zero and here is your readout noise or your sky glow or your gradient. Now, the more that uh, those uh, factors affect this, example again, focal ratio, AGC, light polluted skies, uh, poor transparency, the longer your exposures go or the more of those other factors that you're using uh, this peak the left side of the histogram will move towards the right and the end of the histogram will be compressed against the white point and become oversaturated so you basically want your peak from the left side of the wall of the histogram to the start of the peak, you want it at about one quarter to one third of the way. No more than one third of the way. If you start with the peak here, halfway here, it's going to saturate the end part of your histogram. So, you, and that's that's known as uh, overexposed. So you don't want to overexpose the image. So, basically, w the way I do it is I first start my integration I just pick an integration based on my setup and then once it downloads or refreshes I want to put my I'll go into my uh, adjustments of my hardware and I want my brightness to be between 20 and 30 percent no less than 20 percent no more than 30 percent now my contrast I usually have between 60 to 100 percent if I'm going to be viewing uh, clusters, open clusters or globular clusters, I'll keep the contrast down a bit more towards 60% to preserve the color, try and get some color and uh, 
make the stars look a little bit better. So also uh, when I'm exposing, I will sometimes stack some images using rolling average anywhere from two to four just to get a better signal to noise uh, ratio where uh, then I can do my mid midpoint gamma sliding adjustment like I was explaining in the part one video. So basically we want to keep our exposures in line where the peak of the histogram here to the left side of the wall will fall right about here quarter to about a third right there and no more than that if you start say at about 60 seconds and it ends up being a third there's no point going to 90 seconds and bringing it to halfway it's not going to gain you any detail you're actually going to be losing some of the detail by oversaturating the back regions so that's basically what I wanted to try to discuss about how to properly expose your images without oversaturating. Now I'm going to show you on the histogram what an underexposed image looks like. And we'll go into brightness. Now I'll have to choose a software. And then we'll uh, in increase. So we're going to show what an underexposed so we're going to decrease the brightness and just take a look at it now you can see there's no gap in between here the histogram is compressed against the left side of the wall you can see if I turn this if I sort of reset this we're at let's say 40 percent okay if I reset this watch what happens here and watch the histogram. Okay, so once again, we'll go to 40%. And watch the histogram. Same thing applies to your contrast. Uh, we'll reset that. If you increase the contrast too much, it has the opposite effect as lowering your brightness. So increasing your contrast also darkens it. So we'll say at 70%, and we're starting to be underexposed. That would be an underexposed image. So that's why you got to watch your brightness and contrast settings. But if you take an exposure with your uh, contrast between 70 or 60 and 100, and uh, your brightness between 20 and 30, and you play with it between those ranges, and your peak ends up like this you're underexposed you have to add more integration more exposure time now an overexposure let me just reset this would be say if the brightness was up to say 70 percent and we went to the histogram now you can see we're way overexposed we're about halfway here but look at all that data that is all compressed into the white point. It's all saturated. All these pixel, all these shades, not pixels, these shades of uh, gray have become all white. I know my first tutorial, I made a mistake. I said that uh, the pixels, but I met the shades of uh, gray. So you can see how that's all blown out. Okay. And the same thing if I reset this and we lower the contrast, say to 16, we can see that we're overexposed. We actually uh, lost a lot of data in the histogram. The histogram is not expanded as much now. It has narrowed. Okay, that shows you what happens when we lose too much contrast. So if I was to reset this, you can see it's wide again from here to here. Now what, let's go and see what happens when we lower this, say, to 20. You can see all that data is compressed from here to here before it went from about from here to here. Okay, so that's not really an overexposed image. That's more like 
we lost a lot of detail. We compressed everything and uh, we lost the uh, contrast. So this would be an overexposure by raising the brightness. And you can see the big gap between here. Okay. That peak there is your uh, noise value. You can see all the noise here now. Just stretched all out. So that gives you an idea of uh, how to um, properly expose your images and uh, by reading your histogram what it should look like. So I hope you learned something out of this tutorial, part two. And we're going to be moving on to part three, the final tutorial, uh, how to use the Milo Slick histogram and levels tool. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. So I want to thank you again for watching, and please uh, watch number one first, and then number three after this uh, to uh, get a better idea and understanding about how everything works. Thank you very much. Clear skies and happy near real-time viewing to all.